Okay, could I have everybody's attention to the stage, please? We have an emergency and announcement. A corporate military junta has stolen our democracy, and it's going to take some collective grassroots action in order to take it back. But our anger has to be righteous. It must come from our humanity and not from our frustration. It must compel us to action so that our rage is not blind, but a burning force that makes us get up every day ready to do the work necessary to bring this war to an end, to bend the will of our country and our government to end this war. Dennis Kucinich, on uh, one of the presidential debates, you may have seen him, he's always this little guy. You know. He came to Denver, Colorado and spoke about this Department of Peace idea. And it just blew me away. It was the most amazing talk I've ever heard on, on peace because he said we need a, it's a, a systems level breakdown, so we need a systems level approach to resolving our conflicts. So there's a long history in our country of trying to structure the government to be able to respond to citizen and international needs. There had been about 130 pieces of legislation in Congress to create a Department of Peace. Uh, Benjamin Rush, back in the 1700s, talked about creating a Department of Peace. Thomas Jefferson talked about it as part of the checks and balances of, of part of our government. Um, Winston Churchill said, first we shape our structures, and afterwards they shape us. A country can never be what its people are not. America created a democracy, and from that point we began to act like a democracy. Through the civil rights movement, through the environmental movement, through uh, public-private partnerships, through neighborhood justice centers. Um, our, our body of knowledge and our best practices domestically and understanding how we deal with conflict has improved dramatically, as dramatically as technology has come into our lives in the last 20 years. Um, the Foreign Service Institute, the teaching component of the Department of State, did not teach negotiations prior to about 1974, 1975. That's remarkable that diplomats were not taught how to negotiate. They are now. What do you think of when you never think of an elephant? You think of an elephant. We keep reminding ourselves about war as a culture, so we keep thinking about it. There is little relationship between domestic and international behavior. A big, powerful armed force makes a country more secure. National security means a strong defense. No, foreign policy is the domain of the elites. That's not true. It's your domain. America is the best country in the world. No. America is not the best country in the world. Our fighting soldiers are not the best troops in the world. That's silly. That is framing the issue of war to hold it on a pedestal. At the end of the day, we're left with the reality that we as a nation have boxed ourselves in, our identity, our meaning, and the structure of who we are as Americans. How do we get out of that box? You've heard a lot of speakers today, so I'll be short and sweet and to the point. If you're tired of a cycle of violence, just please raise your hand. Thank you. There's a bill in the House of Representatives right now that was introduced by none other than Dennis Kucinich of Ohio. It calls for a Department of Peace within the federal government. Raise your hand if you're a student. There needs to be a peace organization at every single campus in Philadelphia. Thank you very much.
how, how are you pushing for peace? When we do like walkouts like this, we can go to rallies. Um, we talk with uh, um, like leaders in the community. Yeah, I mean, I just went, I stopped by Wana Peace Alliance meeting three weeks ago maybe, and uh, they're trying to organize like every student to call like their senator or uh, their representative to vote to uh, institute this department. I'd love to see that with the just here freezing basically. This is a really bad day for this to happen because the weather's horrible, but it's so good that we're seeing some support. There's all the peace. I don't know from Grayson Trafford, nor Sear from God's house of Jerusalem, am kept unsleeping hour after hour on end by words and phrases, pictures, images, music, and voices of a culture that just does not care. Now, I understand we wear t-shirts to support breast cancer and billboard our fashionable left-wing politics with the latest and most chic anti-political catchphrases, but you just bought that shirt yesterday, and honestly, I think it was just to impress the girl with dreadlocks that moved in down the hall. Yeah. We're here to start a huge movement. It's already begun, I hate to tell you. It's getting bigger every day, and this is the one thing that proves it. Um, we've been fundraising for this thing called a Peace Bowl, and after many bake sales, after many donations, after many cups of hot chocolate being sold, we finally raised enough money to buy and plant a Peace Bowl on campus. A permanent structure gonna remind us every day that we need peace in our society, that it starts with each one of us, and on the count of three, and they'll unveil it. HR 808 that calls for the establishment of the U.S. Department of Peace. I'm calling in support of HR 808. I'm calling in support of HR 808. That's how you get it done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's. it's far easier to be a cynic than it is to be a peace worker. And I was, that's one thing that I know from past experience and I have a lot of it. My advice to you as an American, take your country back. And to the cynics, they need to be helping you do it because you know, the way things are going in the United States right now, they won't be cynical for long when they say it's just getting worse and worse and worse. You've got to take this country back. You own it. <laughs>